Hello young explorers. Today what is there on the table? A flower, red color flower. Which flower is this? Yes, hibiscus. Mainly available around us. So you must have understood what is our today's topic. Our today's topic is flower. What is flower? Flower is a part of tree. When you see flower, you feel happy. When you see trees around us, you see different parts of the trees and every part of tree has different function. As our body has different organs, organ parts, hand, eyes, nose or internal body organ parts like heart, lungs, liver. And every organ is working for different purpose. Similarly, trees are also living things. Only thing they cannot move from one place to another place. But they do have different parts and those parts carries out different functions. Like all trees have roots. So what roots do? They absorb water and nutrients from the ground and transport it to the different parts of the tree. So tree also has leaves. Now you know the function of leaves mainly is to produce food via photosynthesis process. Tree also have flowers. So what these flowers do? There are different colors of flowers, different types of flowers with different fragrances are there. So what these flowers do and what are the parts of the flowers and why flowers are there on the tree. And also you must have seen a plants with different fruits like mango, guava, orange. So what are these fruits for? What comes on the tree first? A flower or a fruit? Can you recollect? Yes. Flower comes first and then fruit. So these flowers, why they are there on the trees? They are not there for us to, so that we can pluck the flower and greet with flowers to each other or to take out the fragrance from the flower and make some scents or some other things. Definitely flowers has some purpose and that main purpose is reproduction. Every species wants to grow their species. Like if you have a mango tree, you will get mangoes only. You will not get any other fruit on the mango tree because that mango tree wants that its species should increase more and more on the earth. And for that they are using flower as a reproductive organ. I have taken this hibiscus flower. This is a very ideal flower to learn different parts in one flower. As in other species we know that there are male and female. But in trees, you cannot say that this is a male tree and this is female tree. All trees looks to be similar. Similarly, the flowers, these flowers, what I'm, the flower I'm holding contains male and female parts of a flower. But before we talk more about flowers, we will discuss something more because uh, when we dissect this flower, we have to see some small parts of the flowers and those small parts of the flower cannot be seen with your naked eyes. So you need some tool 
to see those details and that tool is anything is around you for example you will find a magnifying glass around you in house so this magnifying glass you use for for what purpose basically a specs or magnifying glass is used to read newspaper or to read hands or to see smaller things so what we say that when you look through the magnifying glass things are magnified how they are magnified so basically when you go to a eye doctor and when you go to visit eye doctor when you have a complaint that mama i cannot read i cannot see the things which are far away from me so at that time you visit a eye doctor you sit on a chair and uh, you have one board which is away from you and the small letters are written on there and doctor ask you can you read this can you read this number this starts from the bigger one and as it goes it's like i have one printed card with me so you can see this card it has numbers and alphabets written here from larger to the smaller so hold it away from you and see or check your eyesight and when you use magnifying glass you can see this they are magnified so using magnifying glass and also this magnifying glass you use to see insects in the garden so i have a artificial garden for example for you so you can find out a insect inside this which insects are there inside a garden small insects and also you can check the soil now i am coming to the point that how things are magnified using magnifying glass that we have to see how things are magnified so let me use a board to so magnifying glass is nothing but a convex lens and when light passes through magnifying glass for example i am holding this magnifying glass and just see here now i am holding this away from the uh, thing and here if you can see a image this image is of a bulb so that bulb which i am holding here that image is created here so what is happening when you hold uh, similarly you have done this experiment in sunlight as well you hold the magnifying glass on a paper and burn that paper so at that time what you are doing you are collecting all the rays coming from the sun at one point that is called as a focus so when a light rays pass through any lens which are parallel to main axis like this after passing they meet at one point this we called as a convergence and this point is called as focus and this the distance between f and this is called as a focal length of that lens so this is how a lens works then how magnifying glass works so for that we have to see how images are formed in a lens so again i am taking this biconvex lens here so this is f and this is 2f and this is called as a pole p of a pole of a lens now if you place you must have seen when you use the magnifying glass you don't hold in this way what do you do when you are reading you need to hold this paper whatever you want to read close to the magnifying glass if you hold it away nothing will be visible or blurred or you you will see inverted so to read it properly you have to hold it very close of the paper so when you are holding close means what this is called as a object and what you see is a image so you hold that object very close to the glass so i am placing one object here say for example like this so how image is form of this object for that there are two rays minimum you have to draw and that is a standard rule to draw ray diagram the first ray should be parallel to the main axis and which will pass through the f after passing and second ray should pass from the center of a lens now these two rays even if i draw further they will not meet each other because they are going away from each other so for that we need to draw them backwards so i will just rub this 
and we will stretch them backward like this and they are meeting somewhere here so this is how this is the original object and this is the image consider this is a magnifying glass and you are holding this magnifying glass like this and you are trying to read a small letter a so that letter appears to be this much of big and where are your eyes your eyes are on this side so we say that image is on the same side and virtual and erect and magnified this is how any magnifying glass or any microscope works so this is how we will be using this lens and a small pair of lenses so if you need big magnification you put pair of lenses to see things magnified more magnified and we will be using these lenses to see different small parts of the flower so now we will see dissection of flower we will dissect this flower into different parts and we'll see their function now as i told you earlier that flowers have both parts male and female part but there are few trees whose flowers carries only male part or female part and the example is cycas tree cycas tree has a male for uh, a different tree for male flower and different tree for female flower but most of the flowers they have male and female parts together that is why the reproduction becomes very easy and uh, see it is the beauty of nature because it gets evolved during a process of thousands of years that every species in its interest of self reproduction because they want to grow their species so they have developed their own tricks so flower have different colors different fragrances to attract insects why flowers or trees want to attract the insect not to just collect honey but when they are collecting honey even if it is a butterfly or honey bee or any other insect or sunbird what happens at the time of they are collecting the honey from the nectar see the flower i will tell you the different parts of the flowers first so let's begin from here these small things they are called as a carpel so this stem comes from the tree when the flower grows and initially you have this carpel then this small is called as a sepal and these colorful things is called as a petal now here you can see there are three layers why three layers your skin is a layer to protect what your rib cage is a thing protects what internal organs similarly what is there inside these things and what this flower wants to protect let's find out later but remember this thing and then apart from this you will see a tube coming from this which is of a red color and you here you will see some tubes and yellow color uh, if you hold it the powder will touch on your finger that yellow color and here you will see those five red dots now this yellow color tube uh, this tube and this is called as a filament and these yellow pollen grains they are called as a male part of a flower specifically a word called stamen so stamen has these anther pollen grains and this tube this is a male part of a flower and this red dots they are called as a stigma and that stigma comes out from a tube that is called as a style and inside there is one more tube 
that is called as a pollen tube and this tube reaches to somewhere deep inside that is called as a ovary so stigma pollen tube style and ovary this is a female part of a flower so let us separate all parts one by one using the tools you have and only thing you need a simple cutter and before you start dissection of a flower you may need to have two three more flowers because this is a very skill thing you have to do if those specifically pollen tube gets cut you need to start again with a new flower so remove these carpel then remove the sepal you can use this instead of using your finger then you can remove one by one this petal even you can use your hand as well to remove these things so i'm just keeping it away so that this is a very important part we need to separate here you will see this tube is attached here and here inside there is a ovary where small ovules or eggs are there so what happens when insects comes here these yellow color pollen grains stick to to the legs of the insect and when they fly here and there these yellow the basic target is these yellow pollen grains should reach to the stigma this stigma is sticky so when these pollen grains reaches here it goes inside from the tube and reaches to the ovary a uh, eggs ovules and there they germinate and seed becomes ready for the next plant so the process of making of a seed happens in the ovary but for that the main requirement is that these pollen grains should reach to this ovary or ovules and how they will reach is through this stigma and how they will reach to stigma is a process of called pollination and this pollination happens by wind by butterflies by insect and uh, uh, even this will not happen with the same flower because insect will come here only pollen grains will stick to that legs and that will go to another flower or another tree of the same species and then that pollination will happen so this is very uh, interesting thing to study about and now we will separate this pollen tube which is inside this style this red color is called as a style so for that you need to a blade and very gently you have to cut this so begin with here and just take a cut like this go on cutting you can separate it gently make sure that there is a small tube inside you are not cutting that small tube which is inside take this out now see this is a dissected flower if you remember these small are carpel these are sepals petals then this is style with filament tube and pollen grains anther and this is the female part of a flower this tube is very delicate make sure that you will not cut it because this is a very delicate tube and when this these anther pollen grains stick to stigma they travel through this small tube and goes inside where we have small ovules or small eggs and there they fertilize now we will see these things under lens so this 
glass is also glass uh, slide is also given to you how to do this so basically you can use any magnifying glass and just see it uh, closely but that magnification is not that much big so we have this another lens so you have to hold it very close take your eye close to it and keep very close to the object and then you will see it clearly so for that what you have to do is we will begin with small things so i'm just keeping it here as like this so take any say i'm, I'm taking this cup so put this glass slide on a cup and first of all we will see these small pollen grains or anther here keep it there even with the this small needle you can break this anther so that small pollens will come out and now first of all see with a lens and then with this glass so even you can use any torch if you have just to create more light from this and after this uh, i will show you one more thing and then we will see through the actual lens we need to cut the ovary so i have one extra flower here I will just show you that. So this is a female part of a flower. I am just cutting it. So there are two ways to cut it cross section. So I am just cutting it first in this way. So when you cut it, you will see small eggs inside. And these small eggs, we have to see through the magnifying glass or lens. You can take out those small eggs using this needle and place them on the glass slide. So take out these eggs. You can take a drop of water on this so that it will be more uh, clear to see so now we will observe these things under this lens so hold this lens i'm holding this lens on the camera but you will look through this using your eye so let us see i'm just holding it on the camera and take it close to the thing and let the things get sharp now here you can see this is the ovary and these are small eggs these are the ovules inside there are lot many eggs inside the ovary they are called as ovules and now let us see this is the anther stigma see it clearly the small tubes and yellow color pollen grains and what we have here the small eggs floating in the water and in that water drop you will also find yellow color pollen grains and these eggs so this is what you can observe through this lens so happy exploring the parts of the flowers thank you colorful flower carnations what you have to do so first of all you need white flower remember this thing you have to cut this white flower 
cut this flower at an angle of 45 degree so that you will get this slanted cut on the stem after this take any glasses add food color to it use different food colors in different containers then take sugar add sugar to the containers then we have to add water to the container if you have vinegar in house you can add some vinegar but if you don't have vinegar it doesn't matter but if you have vinegar you can add some vinegar uh, i'm just adding in one or two so that you will see without vinegar also what happens and then let the sugar dissolve make this color dark after this we have given this 45 degree cut onto the stem you can put this into the container basically you have to wait for 3 to 5 hours so that this color will go through the stem and you that will be reflected in this white petals so i'm also taking this uh, rose white rose cut it in 45 degree you can get more and more colors if you get blue color that will be great in this red color i'm just again putting this gerbera flower and now keep this for 3 to 5 hours and see the difference so you can make colorful carnation using food color sugar water and white flowers so kids look at this beautiful flowers after 2 to 3 hours if you remember we kept white flowers and what turn out to be beautiful colors in the petals of gerbera and white rose You also can make such beautiful flower carnation. So let's go and try out and do share your picture of flower carnation with us. Happy flowering. Thank you.